How is it possible that anybody with any kind of sanity would consider the United States or Britain or the West in general to be in any kind of position to be uh, punishing anyone for any illegalities? If we want to take a look at Iraq, there is at least one million, probably even close to two million dead. We invaded that country, destroyed it, created millions of orphans, millions of refugees, and never even so much as apologized for that. Let's go back to Vietnam where we dropped uh, 20 million bombs, more than all of World War II combined. We have destroyed so many countries. We have tortured and killed and maimed and raped around this planet. Who in the hell in their right mind would consider the United States or the West in general to be in any position to punish anybody? Never mind the obvious facts that this is a false flag attack. Well, we don't operate under international law. What we have is the color of law, the law of the jungle, in which the rich and the powerful basically determine what goes and what doesn't go. Iraq is a perfect example of that. Why isn't Tony Blair and George Bush rotting away in a prison cell for the rest of their lives? Because the law is not being applied. These are war criminals and they should be in prison for the rest of their lives, if not executed, if their own rules were adhered to for their own uh, crimes. Well, the Greater Israel Project is all about uh, destabilizing uh, surrounding nations, ultimately in pursuit of this dream of Greater Israel from the Euphrates down to the Nile all the way over to the eastern Mediterranean. This is the dream of these psychopaths and so destabilizing governments, creating sectarian strife is all part of that menu and all part of the design to create greater Israel. So that, that, that goes, uh, that's self-evident. But I have to go back to what this gentleman is saying in Washington DC about America not wanting to get involved, or Obama not getting involved. What are you talking about? We have been arming people directly who are Al-Qaeda. Al-Nusra Front is Al-Qaeda. These people are psychopaths to the worst order. They are conducting suicide attacks. They are gassing people. We know Carla Del Ponte said in May that it was the so-called rebels in Syria that were using sarin gas, not the, the uh, Bashar al-Assad regime. No, it was not. We know that the United States president is arming people who are on the U.S. terrorist list. He should be convicted of aiding and abetting, giving material support to a terrorist organization, but then again, you know what, we are, we, the West, the United States in particular, Israel and Britain, are the biggest terrorists on the planet. So our little junior partners in Al-Qaeda, which is nothing more than a CIA database, thus the name Al-Qaeda, this is nothing more than a group of terrorists working together, each playing one different role, but all of them working together for the same goal, which is to maintain this hideous and sick and twisted, unjust world that we have, which is a perpetual state of war. Always one illusion, one boogeyman after another, but the fact is Obama is nothing more than a puppet war criminal, just like his predecessor and every other U.S. president before him. So please don't tell up people out there that the U.S. is not involved. It's directly involved, and it is arming people who are absolute psychopaths. The United States is in a perpetual state of war because the bankers control the politicians and they read the script as given to them by the banksters and they make huge amounts of money off of this. What this gentleman is saying about the United States not wanting war, not wanting to get involved is like Iraq 2.0. It's a repeat of the same rubbish that was said, oh we don't want war, uh, you know, war is a last resort. That's absolutely untrue, it's a lie. Those that are in government are nothing more than prostitutes who are carrying out the orders of those who are in charge of them, and those that are in charge want another war. And part of that is what we discussed earlier, the Greater Israel Project, to destabilize any Arab regime which might have any kind of autonomy and self-determination. Any regime in the Arab world that is not an absolute puppet cannot be tolerated. And who are the nations that we target? Those that are not puppets. We don't target those like the Saudi regime, which is the biggest human rights violator in that region. It's cutting off people's heads in public, cutting off hands. It is the most grotesque regime on the planet, and yet we give that regime weapons, and it's no problem whatsoever. The duplicity and hypocrisy of the United States and the West can't even be measured. It is so enormous. And these mouthpieces, such as this gentleman in Washington, is only doing a disservice to himself and his country. And the fact is that American sons and daughters will get involved in this yet again, and these chicken hawks who are pretending to care about the Syrian people are going to be sacrificing not their own sons and daughters. I would like this man to send his sons and daughters and his grandchildren off to Syria when this turns into a greater conflict because this is what we're flirting with is a world war, a third world war. This is not a joke. We are flirting with a third world war on the basis that apparently we care so much about the Syrian people, just like we care so much about the Iraqi people and the Afghani people. The only people that buy this sort of stuff are either bought off prostitutes or the dumbest of the dumb. And we're also led 
to believe that Assad is the dumbest idiot dictator on the planet now, isn't he? Because he invited UN inspectors to come in, and he brought them in on the very day that they come in, he decides to attack his own people 10 miles away from where the inspectors arrive. This is beyond ridiculous, and the only people that buy this, again, are bought-off prostitutes or the dumbest of the dumb. Well, there's no question that they, they don't intend for limited strikes, and that's not going to do anything. They, they want to go in full scale. That's the plan. Of course, they'll use pretext to be able to justify the initial attack, and then they'll concoct more things to justify a greater involvement. The, the Daily Mail reported here in the UK, and it's commonly understood to those who are paying attention, that defense contractors leaked emails from defense contractors proved that there was already an approved plan from Obama down to give these psychopath terrorists al-Nusra Front chemical weapons. We know that al-Nusra Front, 12 individuals in Turkey were caught with two kilos of sarin gas. Where did they get that from? And, and this is, you know, clearly a false flag. We understand this to be true, and it's the only way that they could just, justify an attack at all. And I have to say, I'm, I'm happy that the gentleman in Washington mentioned uh, Dempsey, General Dempsey of the Joint Chiefs, because I'll tell you what, more than anything else, it is the true American patriots, those who are sick and tired of having given up their life to basically serve the American dream, the American uh, nation, the Constitution that they swore to uphold. It's those military men and women. It's it's you now. It's coming to you now. Are you a patriot or are you not? Are you going to let your nation descend even further into the chaos and corruption that has been so sick and so twisted that it's destroying American lives as well as the rest of the world to the tune of 22 American servicemen a day who are committing suicide? Are you going to sacrifice more of your American sons and daughters for Israeli wars, for Zionist wars? Are you going to continue to do that because you are not a patriot? You are in fact aiding and abetting the terrorists you supposedly think you're fighting against and those Americans who are waking up to this I hope to God in the military in particular that you refuse your orders and this is why the people of America who are refusing to buy this nonsense the overwhelming majority do not support any kind of attack on Syria and in those in the military I know that the powers that be are very very frightened that high ups within the military will refuse the orders and I hope this is exactly what happens if an attack on Syria occurs